What is this? Okay. Barrett Low Show, we back. Episode 6. You know, we just finished watching that Jay Taters Game 7. Got it done. YouTube viewership. You see the jersey. But we get, we'll we work our way back to that at the end. We're working, We're going back to where it started. Rockets, Lakers, Game 5, I believe. I can't keep track of these games. Game 4. Yeah, it's 3 1, so that would make it game foe. It was game foe. Let's start with the important stories. Daniel House. So many questions. What are you doing? Alright. So, we make our way to the second round of the playoffs. Guests are allowed in. And this is where you get caught when you're allowed to bring. A, you could go on. The Tinder, look to go through the swipes, get you a little Tinder shorty. You're an NBA player. Just go search on Instagram, find you a little model, come through. Well, you do, you do have a wife and kids. So I guess that would make it harder now I'm thinking about it. Let me think, yeah. So I guess if he brought someone in like that, he wouldn't. That would be, that would probably be new. Or he'd see, they'd see. They'd see the side ting on TV at the games. So he's probably thinking he's got to get in with somebody that's there. But he gets caught now? He's been in the bubble this long and now is when you get caught? You couldn't hold your urges until, you know, you get through this Lakers series? Or you hold it... Actually, I should reverse that because it's still a big game after that. But you couldn't hold your urges? Or No. You held your urges this long. Now is when you give it up. But from the NBA side, I was assuming that's what was happening. I I was assuming that the that workers were the ones that they were allowed they were allowed to have relations with. They're already in the bubble. I thought the ladies that that were working there were having the time of their lives. The choice of any NBA player they want, because them those players they've got urges. I'll tell you that much. And even the ones with wives, I guess. I guess his wife didn't want to come through. She's she's bright. Yeah, she's probably got to take care of the kitties, something like that. I don't know the situation. They're saying they don't have proof, so maybe maybe he's taking the fall for Harden. Who knows what happened? That's a strange situation all the way around. I don't get it. We can get to the game, though, because it didn't even really matter. They played Austin Rivers over him. I would think that that would matter, because I don't really think he's all that nice, even though I'm a Duke fan. But he did fine. Didn't make a diff. He was Harden and Westbrook taking him to cost fest. Mostly Harden, but Westbrook didn't do much. Much to help. Everyone be telling me all the time, you got to put some respect on his name. He averaged a triple-double for two, for two years. 10 rebounds, 10 assists. You gotta give him his credit. That's fine. I'm not saying he's trash. I won't call him cheeks. I won't go that far. He's not bled so. He's not bled no show. You know, he's West Brick. But he's not that. He can he can do some things. You know, he scored 25. Kind of efficient. He cost the last series, but they got through it. So, you know, I won't completely, completely destroy him, but... You don't mean, want me to give him so much credit. You don't want to call him a top 10 player. You don't want to tell me he's better than Jimmy Buckets. and Because he can average a triple-double. How impressive. But in a must-win game. When you got no bigs to rebound. All the rebounds you could want are there. And I'll tell you that much. Three rebounds. Three assists. When you need them. Some of y'all look at the numbers. Some of y'all watch the IG highlights and y'all think that's what it is. This is why I'm here. I was listening to somebody this morning talk about the difference between the Rockets and the Warriors is Warriors, they were playing defense. Do y'all not watch what the Rockets are doing on offense? It's hard and dribble, dribble. Gets a double, then you'll kick it, and then somebody does something, and then everyone else just stands there. That's fine. It got him to game seven away from the finals. If CP3 wasn't the, CP3 was there, who knows? I don't think they would have won it. Warriors would have came through, but who knows? CP with a dog like CP3, maybe it worked. If CP3 was still there, this would be a series. 
this would be a real series. I think they might be able to win it. But no, you know, they got Westbrook, Harden. Westbrook, you know, they be saying he wants it. I'll give it to him, kind of. I think he wants more to be seen as, like, great more than to just win. But he wants it. Harden, I think he just wants to go home and get to his strip clubs. You watch him out there. He just has no energy. Game down 2-1. Must win. 2-11. 5 turnovers. At least in this game 7 of the Thunder. You were playing you know, your normal hard in a big game. But you were playing hard in defense and you were locked in. You just couldn't make shots. It was just in your head. Whatever. You just don't have it there mentally I guess yet. It's been a while but you just don't I guess. But you don't even look like you're trying. You walking around, slavish, double end guys go by you on defense. I don't know how y'all are fans of him. I like I don't wanna hate him. I don't hate him. I, I would like to like him. I don't I don't want to root for the Lakers. I would never want to root for the Lakers. I'd love to root for Harden. I'd love it. But I just can't. I wanna get into the series. I'm, but I'm watching it for y'all at this point. Cause I because there's just no energy from him. The star player. You know, he's got a similar play style to the donkey. I like the donkey. He'd be getting into it with people. He'd be scrapping. He'd be jawing. He'd be trying on defense. Harden, it just comes and goes. And the Lakers almost gave it back to him. Fourth quarter. I thought the game was done. The Lakers were dominating. The Rockets just managed to hit some threes. Westbrook hit some. And they're right back into it. If, if Harden was... If Harden was going hard the whole time, made a couple more plays, hit a couple more free throws, maybe, I mean, he was 16 of 20. Well, not that bad, but they could have had it. Lakers wanted to give it to him. They wanted to. They wanted to hand it back, but Harden wasn't taking it. He said, I want to get back to my strip clubs. I see they opened up. COVID's, COVID's out of here in Atlanta. I'm making my way back to Magic City. Lemon, pe- Lemon Pepper Lou got his way back there a while ago. Nah, I need to get back there. P.J. Tucker with a calm zero. All he does is stand there in the corner on offense. I mean, can't blame him. They don't put him in positions to do more than that. He just stands in the corner if he's not in the three. Only, I think he only took a few shots. Just didn't go in. That's the problem with their offense, you know. Back to with the Warriors-Rockets comparison. They've never had just one per- person just stand in the corner. If you're open, shoot it. At worst case scenario, end of shot clock, one dribble floaty. Nah, that's the Lakers. That's the Rockets' offense. It, I like Dan Tony, you know, but they they just don't keep everyone involved. Or he's got you got Bowie at the top making passes, even though he's not a skilled offensive player. You got guys, you got Curry running around screens and catch it, catch the slip and hit him. There's off-ball screens, all this action cuts. You don't get none of that from the Rockets. That's why, like, Westbrook's... If there's a fit in there, if there's a fit for Westbrook, it's pretty good for him. He can just cut off of Harden. That's where he's playing his best, but... It's not enough for these Lakers, man. Anthony Davis, I've never believed in him down the stretch. I still don't. I don't think... He's not a cost fest, though. There's a difference. He's not... Some people try to make him like top three in the league or something like that. He's not the guy that's going. I've never seen him win a big game by himself. You saw the donkey against the Clippers. He won one by himself. Anthony's not going to do that. But he's not going. He's not going to like blow the game. He doesn't. He had. He had a nice clutch hook shot as the Rockets were coming back, and that kind of sealed it. So Anthony's doing enough. But this one's over. It's going to be Lakers Clippers. We can talk about that later. That'll be an interesting one. But now I'm thinking Clippers. Clippers. They're playing the Nuggets now. So I'm thinking Clippers, Nuggets, and MPJ. Uh, how would, what, what are you going to do, seeing as you didn't get as much touches in the second half? That's up to the coaches. And they're going to call. What, what plays they're going to call. It's not going to work if, if we're just giving the ball to Jamal Murray and, and Jokic. Huh? Did you not watch? Were you not there the last series? Have you not been there the whole year? Do you not know what the team was last year? 
where Jokic closed out the series and Murray had 50 like three times? Go get a rebound. You get putbacks. You can do that. It's like, man, when I'd be like going back to my hometown to hoop, or just in general if I play pickup with scrubs, but but most of the time, like, back in Livonia, there's there's some decent hoop, there's some nice hoopers. We have some good competition, some good hoops, but there's pretty much always like, you know, just some guys that don't play. They're just there, you know, hanging out, playing hoop, playing ball, whatevs, and that's a good time. I don't mind it. But then there's always a scrub. Not always. Not always. But sometimes you'll come across a scrub who, if they don't get the ball to possessions, you could be winning, not whatever, be like, you gotta look for me more. You gotta be happy to be here. You just gotta be happy to hoop here. Like, if you're open, I'll give it to you, but I'm not about to be looking for you. Like, if if I'm not got my, if I don't, if I can't get my look, and you're open, I'll hit you. Or you just you have a wide, or you have an open layup, I'll hit, hit you. I'm trying to hit you, but I'm not like searching out to get you touches. You should just be happy to be here. Go try to get, be a hustler, be a role player. But you know, Michael Porter Jr. It's what happens when you grow up being a high school celebrity. Most likely, you can't blame him. He was a top dog his whole life. He was at uh, what school he go to? Some some school where his dad had a connection. I forget. I want to say Wyoming, but I don't think it was Wyoming. It was... It's coming close. It's coming to me. It's just some yellow school. Ah, she... I don't know. That's going to bug me. It's in Kentucky's conference. It's in... Ugh, my brains are scattered. Whatevs. It's Missouri. It was Missouri, I'm pretty sure. He, he went there, a school where top dogs usually don't go, so they're going to treat him like royalty. He's probably never had... He might have had a coach to put him in his place, but he's always known that he's the top guy. He's never had to be a role player, playing his playing his role, doing his thing with behind the star players. And he's not wrong that they could have moved the ball a little more. They could move the ball a little more. Talking about you need your touches. If I'm the coach, if I'm alone, going to that game I just watched, I wouldn't have played him. I would have said... We got to the conference finals without you last year. We got our high seed without you being a bench warmer the whole year. Did you not watch you on defense last game? They were doing anything they could to get you on them, and they were frying you. They were taking you to all types of schools. Every kind. Post. Middies. ISOs at the top. They'll take you to school anywhere. You were probably one of the worst defenders in the league. But Malone, players coach, nice guy. Put him back out to play big minutes. I think he ended up scoring like five. He didn't know he played a whole he played pretty bad. I won't even say he played bad. He just didn't do anything the whole game. He had a big shot down the stretch. And you know, the Instagram fans, which is a lot of NBA fans, they just go and see that one shot down the stretch. And talk about oh he was right he needed more touches maybe maybe not I don't I didn't think he should be out there at the at that time even like all that aside I didn't I'm I was thinking as the Clippers were starting to come back it might be time for Malone to get canned Millsap brought him back and you're not having him out there you got Gary Harry out there Gary Harry Harry almost let him come back with his dribble dribble around everywhere pull out to the three shoot the air ball. I'm, the game was over if he just gave it to Jamal, Jamal Murray. He was cooking. They were him and Jokic were on fire. One more bucket and it's over. Up ten. And then no nope, air ball. Kawhi almost brought him back, but playoff P ain't gonna step up enough to come back in that situation. So now we got game six, Clippers Nuggets. I said it would be five or six Clippers. I think Kawhi is the best player in the league, so he's gonna get it done next game. But I love to see the Nuggets take it to a Game 7. I don't have the most faith in the Joker. He flops a lot. Beverly was right. I don't love it from him, but he does. You saw the freaking the mid-range. No one touched him. He airballs and falls back. No one touched him, but he got the call. And when he makes a mistake, he just pouts and 
kind of just walks back. He's like a sloth out there. But if I'm the Clippers, here's what I'm thinking. If I'm a doubtful Clippers fan. Jamal Murray hasn't had 31 time. And it's 3-2. They've got two games on us. Me, Barrett Lowe, not a Clippers fan, nothing like that. I'm thinking for the Nuggets to win... I'm not thinking. I'm not even in the mindset thinking they can win this series. But for them to win a game or two, Jamal Murray is gonna have to go crazy, crazy. He went seven for twenty-five tonight. Pretty sure that's what it was. I'm pretty good remembering these numbers. I only looked at it once, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But seven twenty-five, and y'all lost. PG didn't even play that bad. He just you know normal, and y'all lost. Kawhi, Kawhi, with those, oh my gosh, y'all see his shoulders, he be going to the rim, people fly off him, that's the buffest dude in the league, I'll tell you that much, he's hooping, and y'all lost, y'all, that team's chemistry, they are talented as hell, but it's pretty low on the chemistry side, but I'm thinking, Jamal, he's capable of dropping a 40 piece, 40 piece nuggets, Maybe and get you 50 nuggets in the next two games. And whoo, you got to have playoff P entering a game six and game seven. Those two things combined. Jamal Murray's waiting to explode. Pay up playoff P's waiting to choke. Those two things could make it interesting. Me, I'm thinking Kawhi's, Kawhi's a robot. He's not letting none of that happen best player in the league both sides his impact is a little less a little less of this series now after i think about it some more because there's no one from the lock up really when he gets on jamal murray jamal murray can't really do anything so the muse also the, mid, the, the middle finger block i don't want to stick up my middle finger youtube be wild and i don't want them to defund me or whatever they be doing but y'all saw the middle finger middle finger block when he gets switched on Jamal, he can make his impact, but he's not hes not blocking up every possession, I'll tell you that much. Does not... I mean, he's got Jeremy Grant. Game before this one, I think it's... The games are so hard to keep track of. Game four. Zero rebounds in 34 minutes. Kawhi's doing something out there, but I don't think he's making as big of an impact as where, where he's going to be guarding LeBron James next series. And that'll probably be Clam Central. So we got any other thoughts about that series? Not off the top of my head, honestly. We can, we can maybe loop back around if something pops to me, but I think it's about time to get to Taters. Celtics. Saw Gordon Hayward on the bench. Could make it interesting for the next series, but... <sighs> Pascal. Pascal. You didn't have one good game out of seven. That's tough. We I seen him hoop in the finals, so he can't be too hard. He'll come back next year with more in his bag. He's gotten better every year. And I I gotta say I I was wrong about this series. I mean, I was right in my original stance that the Celtics would win. But I thought if it got to a close game seven, close enough. Experience would take it. I, I was thinking this, the Raptors would probably take this one, even though the Celtics were a much better team. It would probably would have been the most lopsided, lopsided in the opposite way win ever if the Raptors won this series. Where the Celtics, all their wins until this one were just blowouts. The Raptors got all their wins by the skin of their teeth. So I just thought if it was a close one again, experienced champions, they just close it out. But I think oh, oh, more than that in general. The team with the best players is what's going to close it out. And that's Jay Taters. I've been on this since college time. Taters is that man. He's a dog. He's got it in him. Made the plays down the stretch. He did what he had to do. I don't know what his stats were. We'll look at that for a second. But first we could talk about some Kemba. So yeah, okay. So Tatum had 29, 12, and 7. Had the key rebound. Seal it. Get the rebound. Hit the two free throws after Grunt after Grunt Williams didn't want to hit his either of his his free throws. Kemba man. 
I don't like this. I don't like to give people the hurt excuse, but I'm a little worried about him. I don't see any explosion from him. I'm thinking that knee, and when it's a knee injury, that's from he was out before the pandemic, and then months later, he was still dealing with it. That's a little scary. I I would be surprised if he was 100% right now. I don't want to give him the excuse because he's been hooping better than this before. He's got to hoop better than he's hooping now. But Taylor's got Taylor's able to carry regardless. And that that those wings that wing lineup, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, just those two. That's scary. If that matched up with the Clippers in the finals, that would be fun. Cowie, PG, Taters. Jalen having two two way wings like that that's clamp central you can have a guard costing like that but wings can do it all you see great centers Joel Embiid get swept Rudy Gobert knocked out even with his guard scoring 50 plus point guards they just they just can they can't guard everybody they can't you can't put them on power forward centers, but these wings, man, they just affect the game in too many ways. So now they're going to have Hayward coming back. You have Hayward coming back, and they're going to have the Heat next series. That'll be interesting. The Raptors, I mean, they, they did what they had to do. I can't. I couldn't expect them to go any further. They just didn't have the talent. For the Celtics, now we're just thinking for the Heat. I haven't thought about it really. Celtics Heat. This will be a good series, especially if Hayward's back. I've got to take the Heat though. Brad Wanamaker. He's worse than anybody the Heat throws out there. Grunt Williams. I just don't trust these guys that the Celtics throw out there. Iguodala for the Heat. Ooh, they could put him on Taters, and it might be clips. It might be tough for Taters, man. He was struggling without any wings for the rep, for Ananobi to add no regard in him, Pascal. He was struggling a little bit game six. He had, he had his points, but he wasn't really doing what he had to do, putting it away down the stretch. They, the Heat are going to be able to throw Jimmy, Iggy, Jay Crowder? Nah. Heat are going to the finals, man. What'd you think about that? Miami Heat in the finals. Now, I don't think people would have thought that some months ago that that could really happen. But it's setting up. Now we got the Lakers and Clippers. Probably. Versus them. My stomach's been on the fritz. Looked at my phone. Saw Pascal Siakam talking about he takes the blame for this loss. It's what you love to hear. People need to cut him some slack, though. Everyone on social media talking, going crazy on Pascal. They're calling him playoff P. Come on. That's the problem. Y'all know he won a championship last year? Y'all know he played great in the finals? No, no, what was he drafted? Second round? Undrafted? I think he was second round. He was never supposed to be this. He was G League. He had one bad series. He'll be fine. He deserves criticism. He had because he could not. He didn't show up really at his best for any of the games. He couldn't hit threes. But he'll be fine. NFL started last night. Last night, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to get into like breaking down NFL games on here. I never. I played it in freaking third and fourth grade. I didn't like it. They put me on the line. People were mean to me. First year, or, yeah, I think it was first year. It was my my grade, and then the younger grade, and I was chilling. I was, I was you know, just coming in after soccer practice, messing around. I got to play a little tight end. And then the next year, was I was the younger kids with, I was the younger grade with the older kids. They were mean to me, man. Yeah, I was on the line, and there was kids that were bigger, bigger than they should have been at that age. And they were running me over. I was not built to do that. I was. I'm not built to be a lineman in football. Maybe. I always thought I was a nice quarterback. Out in the yard, I was throwing darts. Y'all should have seen me in my side yard. Oh my gosh, 
Megatron receiver too. But when it comes to blocking and even maybe eh, no, nah, I'm just not. I'm just not a violent. I'm not like. Man, more of the story is I'm not a I'm not a big real play football playing guy, so I'm not gonna be breaking down NFL games nothing like that. I could break down hoops for y'all. NFL, I'll watch. We could we could chat about the big stuff that happens. My only real thought from that game, you know, you know, my homeboy is gonna come in and dominate, but the fan noise, that's more of a thing for NFL. Even though. They had fans there. They had like sixteen thousand fans. It was it looked basically empty compared to how many seats they had, seats there are in the stadium. In the NBA, I don't mind having zero fans. I think maybe it's what they how they did it better with the virtual fans or whatever. But mostly, I think basketball is just less reliant on fans. We watch. I like watching a we watch AAU games. People watch high school games on on YouTube. People go to Rucker Park. Watch people watch games at the park. It doesn't need to be some huge arena atmosphere. I think football is built on that, so it's it's more of an impact for them. Basketball has been fine. NFL, we need we need to see those guys going crazy in the stands. I still watch it. I still love watching football, but without having those seeing those crazy fans with their bellies painted. Man, going to those Bills games back in the day, nothing like it. All the fans there, maybe going crazy, tailgating in the parking lot. You get in there, some someone's always gonna do something crazy. You'll watch some junk people throw up. One time, I was like a little kid, it was freezing out there in the snow. I was, it was time for the national anthem. I was, you know, standing up. Maybe I had my heart, you know, I'm respectful, whatever. It's, it's never been a big deal to me. I just do it, whatever. And the guy behind me rips off my hat. It's like 10 degrees, freezing cold. Rips off my hat and says, What are you, from Canada? Take your hat off when the, when the anthem's going on. There's just always there's just always good times at games. Fans are crazy. F- football fans, you need them. You need them. You need them on TV. It's just fun being there. It was, part, it was a, aside from the point. But it's a podcast. I blab about what comes to my mind. I'm not really thinking most of this out. Honestly, that's mo- that's about what I have. I might, if I think of something again, I'll come in here and start some more blabbing. That's the podcast for today. I've been fighting through some tummy pain. I'll get that healed up and I'll come back with an elite video next time. Not that I, I didn't put some put out some work into this one. I feel like this one's solid. But next one, I'm gonna come back elite. And if you're here, I'll. If you're here all the way through, what a guy. Leave a comment. Leave a comment for you, boy. No one's leaving comments. Everybody's hitting me, talking about they love, you know, you like that. I say that. I appreciate that. All y'all that's been showing love, all that, all y'all that's that's tuning in, spreading the word, the good word, the BLS boys, Barrett Low Show Squad. Drop a like. Drop a comment. Give me a subscribe. Let's keep this moving. This is going to be, the, nah, this is the number one podcast in the world. And we're going to get the numbers there real quick. Have a good one, fellas and ladies. There's like 15% of y'all are ladies. Mm Mm-hmm.